Today's a great day for a quick meal that we froze last time. I'm just gonna cut a slit in the top and cut the edge off and nuke it. Pumpkin, is your favorite time of the year? Is Santa gonna come for you this year? Is he gonna bring you something good? And there's that beautiful Christmas tree that your grandma made us. Very sweet. Love it. This is Pumpkin's favorite time of year. How lucky am I? Look at all of these acorns that were gifted to me for my birthday from my old high school friend in Texas and a couple of handfuls of pecans as well, which don't grow here. Thanks, Jeremy. Hi, pumpkin. I've had a wonderful day of doing only what I want to, which was cleaning my living room and getting my Christmas tree up, starting a fire, watching some YouTube videos. I watched some Pattern Scout today. Tonight, for easy supper, we put in some lemon chicken thighs, lemon marinade, I forget what else was in there, lemon, probably soy sauce, oil, into the sous vide for Oh, it was over five hours. I cooked up some rice and now I'm getting my cast iron ready to sear that. And then some frozen garden green beans that I just cut a slit in the top of the vacuum seal bag and I'm gonna nuke those for three minutes. First, I need to get my chicken uh, paper toweled off so it's dry and then get it seared and then dinner will be ready. And it only takes a minute or two to get both sides. The skin fell off of that one, but we're ready for dinner. Saturday morning, and I've been busy tinkering, doing things I love. I first made a large jar of herbal steeped honey cough syrup which is in here it's got thyme fresh and dried i didn't have enough fresh cardamom seeds and fennel seeds steeped in hot water and then add honey back to the strained liquid i am dehydrating some orange slices for teas and garnishes and i'm also going to can some cranberry sauce, the kind where you plop it out of a jar and it's in one solid piece. Love that. Four beautiful family dinner size jars of jellied cranberry. And this wouldn't fit in a jar, so I have that for lunch. I am spending the last afternoon of my birthday long three-day weekend reading Braiding Sweetgrass. I highly recommend this book. It's excellent. This is why I love having a birthday in the middle of November because basically from Veterans Day all the way through New Year's Day, it's a holiday and it's great. Oh, look, there's a candle that my son gave me for my birthday. Nice to have it going while I'm reading. Something else I did today was I rearrange some things in my office so that I can access my sewing machine and put up my old featherweight table. It's an antique table. Um, I don't know where my featherweight is for quilting, but this is the serger that my mom gave me to where I can use that or get to know how to use it. And I actually stored it. I did some mending today, but that's my Bernina sewing machine. 
So I have a cleared space now. I'm thinking this is my um, fabric that I brought back from Africa this time last year. Maybe I'll make that into something. It's actually meant to be a, a wrap. You make a dress out of it just like that, but I might um, make something else out of it. But yeah, the room is kind of spruced up and rearranged to where I can maybe sew a garment this winter, which is on my list of things to do that I want to do. This is the catio window. That's a, one of my most popular videos is how to create the catio. So if you want to see that, make sure you check the, make sure you check the links for that. Sunday night, it's a good night to make chili. It's actually like 10 to four, but I'm gonna get it started. We've got ranch beef, garden onions. All my onions were so small this year, what a shame. Garlic that I grew. Beans that I canned, I did not, those were not ones that I grew, but I had dried beans that I canned. And tomato sauce that I canned a couple weekends ago, real salt, chili powder, a can of purchased diced tomatoes because I made all of my tomatoes into sauce and paste, and then some basil, pepper, and olive oil. So I'm going to get this all going to make some chili, and we'll just add some cheese at the end, and this is going to be our dinner tonight. <laughs> One thing I wanted to do after work today, and it's been, I don't know, six or eight weeks, is strain and bottle up my wild forage bitters and my rosemary tincture. The rosemary was in vodka, and the wild bitters was in rum. There are citrus peels, I think they were um, grapefruit peels, I believe, some cinnamon bark, uh, dandelion root, Oregon grape root. Oh my lord, what else did I put in there? Juniper berries, ginger. I see a star anise in there. Not all of these were wild forage, but uh, most of it. Some of it. Anyway, I can't remember everything that I had put in there, but I have strained it and used this teeny tiny funnel, and I've gotten two jars of the bitters. I'll have to label that. And then I have one jar of the rosemary tincture and I have some left. I do have another jar, but I suppose I'll fill that and just have to get more jars because I also have a rosehip oxymel that has rose hips um, in apple cider vinegar and honey that I'll have to strain at some point here. And calendula oil for skincare items that's steeping and this is probably in vodka, more calendula petals for a tincture. So I've still got one, two, three more things that I need to bottle up. So I'm going to have to go get some more of those amber bottles. So I guess I will go ahead and fill up another bottle of the rosemary tincture that's in here. And if you don't know what bitters are, it, this smells absolutely wonderful, but you just use a few drops of this under your tongue before a meal, and it helps you digest. And my last small task for tonight is to pack these dehydrated orange slices into that jar. I had to dry these for a couple of days, but they did finally dry. I will put a couple of desiccant packets in with it just to make sure it stays that way. And these little packets are reusable. You can tell when they're good. They have orange beads that turn to dark colored when they need to be reactivated. You can reactivate them in the oven. So I'll include a link for that, those items in the description box. But I'm going to put two in here just because. But what a cute way to display these orange slices. It's the morning of Thanksgiving. I've had my coffee. Um, I ran home from work last night. I forgot to take you guys along with me on this little bit. I got my deluxe mashed potatoes 
whipped up and I just need to bake those this morning right before I leave for the hour long trip up Northern Hills to my sister's for Thanksgiving with the family. I just need to get myself ready, bake those mashed potatoes, and while I do that, I'm listening to my homestead holiday Christmas music video. Mine is accompanied by this little singer, Old Pumpkin. Yeah, she's old and she talks a lot. I boiled the potatoes and riced them and added the ingredients last night. Put them in the 9x13 pan and now they're baking and I'm doing this at the last minute so that they are warm when I get to my sister's which is an hour drive. Before dinner, oven space is at a premium, so I'm hoping that they either stay warm or just need a slight nuke to keep, get them back up to hot. So I've got the one piece this way, and I've got a couple pieces long this way so that I can just drop the hot pan in and then fold these up over the top and try to insulate it and keep it warm for the car ride. So besides the deluxe mashed potatoes, I am also taking, I'm always responsible for board games. This is one of our favorites. I'll include the link to this one in the description box. I always take my own coffee, my afternoon coffee with me because I love the way I make my coffee. Um, I'm taking this acorn squash that the neighbor gave to me and she says it's a different variety that it's all orange, that's not just overripe. My dad loves acorn squash so I'm going to take some to my folks, take that to my folks. I've um, found this, I have a downstairs set of wooden shelving that I call my butler's pantry. I don't know. Anyway, I have a lot of antique dishes that I've collected and this one I got out to, once I get to my sister's, I'll display, put out some of these pum uh, pumpkin seeds that I seasoned in the last video. So we'll put some of those out for snacking. Here's the jellied cranberry sauce that I canned the other day. So that's going with us. And then these are the chopped fermented cranberries. They've been fermenting quite a while and actually they're a little boozy so that'll make dinner interesting but they taste so good. So that's what I am taking aside from the mashed potatoes. This is the honey ferment liquid that also had orange peel, star anise, ginger, and cinnamon stick in it that I've had the cranberries fermenting in for uh, several months for that batch. Um, I saved it and I put the fermenting lid back on. This is how I ferment all of my stuff. If you want to know how to do that, I've got a couple of videos. In fact, I have a video for ferment, honey fermenting the cranberries that you can find in my list of videos or I'll try to remember to put a link in the description box. But this is the liquid left over and it's not, it's not clear like a wine, but it's pretty syrupy because it's honey based. And it tastes really good and I'm kind of thinking that I should take this with me too maybe as an aperitif but this would be good as a 7-up spritzer a ginger ale spritzer to because it is boozy at this point it is it's fermented long enough to create sort of a cranberry honey wine I'm saving my dandelion wine rhubarb mead uh, choke cherry wine choke cherry liqueur what was the other thing I have down? I have two liqueurs down under my sink. I forget. I'm saving those to take up for Christmas when we have the family gather at my folks' house. So this will be my um, fermented drink for this holiday. I had to dig them out from underneath my kitchen sink. Choke cherry liqueur and this is the Concord grape liqueur. All right, it's good and hot. So let me get it out of the oven and get it transported. I'm starving. And I'm thinking about some of my favorites, which would be ham. I love stuffing and pumpkin pie and cranberries. Um, what are some of your favorites? Those are my favorite turkey day dishes. I'm sure there's more, but those are the main ones that come to mind.
brisket and turkey and what's in here? Stuffing? And smoked pheasant. Cranberries, relishes, salads, raspberry pretzel salad, drinks. Ooh, sweet potato, mashed potatoes. Get in there. And we are going to dig in. Some random cat. I smell turkey. If you want to see how I make my real sourdough, you can click on the video in the link. This is the folding stage. It's hard to do one-handed. Anyway, we're going to have fresh sourdough today. 68 degrees out, a great day, which sucks for, we want snow to go skiing, but it's a great day to change the hot tub water. There we go, sourdough is rising. Beautiful. You can see how the score point controls where it busts open. That's why you do that. As with pretty much anything you bake, cakes, muffins, bread, you want to get it on a cooling rack immediately. You don't want, unless the cookies, like sometimes cookies say to leave them on the cookie sheet for like a minute just so they're not so soft and don't fall apart when you're getting a off with your spatula, but everything else, you get it off and cooling on a rack immediately. Otherwise, the bottom crust of whatever you're baking can get tough. And that same goes for sourdough. But these turned out very nice. I've spent the weekend very nicely. I've gotten a few Christmas decorations up everything I'm going to put up. And I don't put up a whole lot because I don't have a lot of space in my little house, but I've got a few things put up. My, ooh, I bet you can't see them. My Christmas albums for my record player, some old, some old vinyl. And, oh yes, just a few things. My Santa paint by number. Um, I actually created a time-lapse video of that. If you want to, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description or you can search through my videos. That was kind of fun. I also did a, I did a time-lapse of that one too. Love that one. That one's up all year. My Star Wars snowflakes. I have a few more to cut. I just haven't had time. Um, stockings. My favorite pop-up books. And this book is one that I bought when my son was a baby. It's beautifully illustrated. I'll see if I can find it and put a link to it if it's still available. But what we do is every year we have a family member read it to my son and then sign the book. So he's got a book full of signature from family members, some of which are no longer with us. So it's kind of a special tradition. And my tree is up, and remember the beautiful tree skirt I showed you that my mom made me for my birthday? That's my main decoration of the tree. I think I'm gonna, and I do this once in a while, I'm not gonna put decorations on my tree. It's pretty just with the lights. And uh, I have a story, you're gonna think I'm weird, but some years 
When I do put the decorations up, I shrink wrap around the entire tree with the decorations on, except for a few that are very breakable. I shrink wrap the tree with the decorations on and we haul it downstairs just like it is so that next year, all I do have to do is bring it upstairs, take the shrink wrap off, zhuzh it a little bit, and then I'm done. I love having a decorated tree. I, for some reason, do not like actually decorating it. Um, let's see, what else? There's that decoration, pumpkin. And just a few other little things that I have spread around. These cute pillows, mom embroidered that a few years ago. And then this was a gift from her last year. She makes those row pillows and sometimes they have lights in them. Very cute. And just occasional things. We are also stampers. I have a few videos that I've kept on my channel that show some stamping stuff. I put postcard, Christmas postcards in my postcard tree, vintage ones. And then I want to show you, this is the Santa pitcher and mugs that my grandmother and great grandmother painted. They had out at Red Owl, they had a kiln. What did they call the little, there's a little building next to the garage. My grandpa had the Red Owl garage and then they had a little building next to that between the garage and the house where they did ceramics. And there was a kiln in there, so they did lots of ceramics. And this is one of my favorite things that they made. These mugs. Hand-painted, fired themselves. Look at Santa. It's a great big picture. Just love it. Here's the other thing I did yesterday that's been on my list for a while, but I've harvested lots of wild and garden-grown flower petals. Um, I have lavender and bee balm, fireweed from up at Terry Peak when we hiked. This is marigold petals, wild rose. Uh, I don't remember what all these are. Bee balm. These are bee balm petals. These are bee balm leaves. Uh, chamomile that I grew. Are these sunflower petals? Yep, sunflower petals. Rose hips that I've scraped the seeds out of and that's lavender buds from what I've grown. These are calendula petals that I grew, but the rest of this is leaves, like tea leaves. This is all for tea. Oh, and then I have my, I made a stevia tincture from stevia I grew in my garden tower. Um, this is all for tea, so it's raspberry leaves, wild strawberry leaves, ginger mint, lemon balm, regular mint. Um, here's a hawthorn berry tincture. Uh, bee balm leaves, a few honey sticks, what's that one, mint. So this is, oh, and linden from actually two summers ago, my son and I harvested those in, uh, did some urban foraging, and I still haven't used them. Those are good for tea and baths and different things, but I love the smell of linden. So, oops, now I can't get it back in there. So this is all meant, I, I needed to get it out and visible so that I would blend some teas. I'm a coffee drinker all the way, but I also wanted to drink teas from my wild foraged and homegrown herbs. I also have some packaged teas in here, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to spruce up my coffee section a little bit. Mom also made that embroidered framed piece. I just love it. I'm trying my best to not get into big projects or do a bunch of chores. So I thought the easy thing for lunch while my son is skiing, we actually did get enough snow for him to ski, is to make some uh, Smokies in this little crock pot. And all you do is dump in a package of Smokies, dump in some chili sauce as much as it feels right. So let's dump this in. Just shake a bunch in there. Usually I do about a third of a jar. And then just to take some of that acidity off, I'm just going to put a huge chunk of choke cherry jelly in there. This on high and have a little bit of a late lunch, which is more going to be snacks, but I'm also going to roast some Brussels sprouts to go with it. So get the lid put on and let that go. I have a few Brussels sprouts that I 
bought at the store. I've got some olive oil. I'm going to sprinkle some real salt over these before I toss them. And then I'm going to use for my pepper wild Madagascar peppercorns from Indri Vanilla. We're gonna do a little vanilla project after this. You can see how they have stems. They're apparently like peppercorns, but not quite, and they have the stems on them, that's fine, but I need to get a dedicated grinder for those, and I haven't, I'm waiting for it to go on sale on Amazon, but I'm going to hand grind just a few peppercorns for my Brussels sprouts with my mortar and pestle. So I'm gonna do that first. Get those Brussels sprouts going and then work on my gift project using my vanilla extract and my vanilla paste that I made. And there we go. It doesn't look like the stems ground up very well. I like pepper finely ground, which is why I like the plain old stuff out of a metal tin. I do, I'm not really crazy about coarse ground pepper ever, like cracked black pepper, but I'll use it. But So I ground this up pretty fine. I'm just going to have to sift through the stems is all. I actually put it in my small little fine sieve and I'm just sprinkling it on that way for now. And that leaves some of that. But I just need to get these tossed up and put in the oven at 400 for probably about a half an hour. And in the meantime, that'll give the Smokies more time and I'm going to work on my little Coquita, Coquito, my little gift project for my mom. While my Brussels sprouts are baking or roasting for my lunch, I'm going to make this little gift project holidays called Coquito, which is a Puerto Rican eggnog. You need one can each of sweet, sweetened condensed milk, coconut milk, coconut cream, and evaporated milk, and one cup of rum. And then to taste, you want vanilla extract, vanilla paste, cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg. And then I'm going to blend it up and bottle it up and then it needs to stay in the refrigerator but it's a nice little holiday shot. I'm going to use the vanilla that I have steeping in my mother jar where I just throw extra beans in there and then I'm going to use my Papua New Guinea, the first vanilla paste that I made. It's so flavorful so we're just going to have fun mixing this up. Yep. I wish I had a bigger blender. Darn. I'm going to use my whisk for the spices and vanillas. It's supposed to be to taste, so I'm not really sure how much to add. Ooh, that's good. Now, my mother jar was started on June 17th, so it's not that aged, but it's definitely the strongest extraction that I have going on right now. And it has been almost six months, so it should be fine. So I'm going to add a couple of, let's do maybe three big spoonfuls of this to start, of my extract. Mmm, it smells so good. And this is just mixed beans. Anytime I get an order from Indra Vanilla, I just make sure I order a little bit more. If I'm doing a paste recipe that calls for an ounce and I have an extra bean, I'll throw it in here. Okay, now the paste. The paste you can make, this was my first batch, started on July 19th. You can use this right away, and especially after a month it gets more flavorful, but this is good right away. And this is so, oh my gosh, so good. So I'm going to get a healthy spoonful of this and see how far that gets us. On flavor might add more but we're gonna start there I want to shake in some cinnamon I don't know it's a pretty big batch so I that's probably a teaspoon teaspoon and a half I'm gonna do a couple of shakes of nutmeg maybe just two shakes nutmeg is pretty strong and similar with the cloves I'm not gonna put a whole lot in that might be an eighth of a teaspoon or quarter of a teaspoon just to start. We'll check it out and see what the flavor's like here. So very carefully, 
I'll try to get this. There's no way I'd be able to run the blender with it being this full, but this, this is fine. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Mmm. Yum. Okay. Love it. So now what I need to do is funnel it into these flip top containers. I just need to put a label on it, stick it in the fridge, and give it to my mom for her birthday. Coquito Puerto Rican eggnog. Yum. But first, I'm going to try a little bit myself. Bottoms up. And while I was making that, my Brussels sprouts were done. Oops. Look delicious. And the Smokies are plenty done as well. Kind of an odd lunch, but I'm just adding a piece of sourdough bread. So I was on my front porch the other day when my neighbor brought me some acorn squash from her 95-year-old dad that farms on the east side of the state. And I noticed this. And I'm super excited. That is a praying mantis egg case. And then I'm looking around and I found another one here. And there's probably more. So that is really cool. We're going to have praying mantis next year. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving.